there. Some big news over the uh, week that uh, President Trump said that he was going to move the U.S. Embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, as well as recognize uh, publicly for the first time uh, with a news conference and everything the fact that Jerusalem is going to be uh, the capital recognized by the United States set off a whole lot of conversation. We'd like to uh, welcome Andrew Rayfield, President and CEO of the Jewish Federation of St. Louis. Andrew, welcome to Big 550 KTRS. Pleasure to be here. Thank you so much. Also, Rory Picker, uh, niece, the Jewish Community Relations Council of St. Louis. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. All right. um, Let's get right to it. Uh, Your thoughts. And was this a giant surprise? It sort of came out of nowhere. So what are your thoughts as you watch this week? Well, thanks very much. Let me just begin by saying the Jewish community and the Jewish people have long recognized Israel as the capital of Jerusalem. It's been the heart of our people for 3,000 years. It has been the capital declared that by the state of Israel since 1950. And the lack of international recognition for that has been, I believe, a historic injustice uh, for that time. They keep saying that President Bush did it, President Clinton did it, President Obama did it. Right. What, what did President do that the other ones didn't do? Well, thank you for saying that, because the act that uh, any kind of political act, and what Trump did in the statement was a political act, has to be judged not only on the content of what it achieves, but the method by which it achieves it. And what he did, differentiating from Clinton, Bush, and Obama, was make the judgment that the manner of recognition should not be tied to a comprehensive peace plan and should just go ahead. And if I could give you an analogy, the the concern that many people have that you're seeing, uh, imagine that we want to, that we have a beehive in your backyard. You all have backyards, you all have kids, or you know people that do. Uh, There's a beehive and there are lots of bees around with a threat to stinging. Uh, you want to get rid of the beehive. So the international recognition of Jerusalem, well, you got rid of the beehive. That's great. But then the question is, how do you go about getting rid of that beehive? And if you just go and take a stick to the beehive, well, you've gotten rid of the beehive. That's the good piece. But you've created a worse situation and more of a risk of bee stings. So hopefully you do it in a planned way and you do it in a manner that reduces the overall risk even as you get rid of the beehive. And I think that's what other presidents wanted to do and the concern and you've seen this by uh, all u.s ambassadors to israel the former except for two uh, think that it was a dangerous thing to do and that's the concern but we are delighted that the beehive is gone jerusalem is the capital of israel roy picker niece what are your thoughts I agree with Andrew and all of his assessments. I think that we're really paying a lot of attention to how this impacts the local communities as well. Um, We are very concerned about violence that might happen overseas, but we're also concerned that people are going to try to conflate a political conflict in the Middle East with a conflict between religious communities locally in St. Louis. And our Jewish and Muslim communities here have enjoyed decades-long relationships, and we're actually in the process of planning right now our seventh annual Jewish and Muslim Day of Community service that happens on Christmas Day. Last year we had 1,300 volunteers come out to show support for one another, learn from one another, and do service for our broader community. And so we're just trying to make sure that people know that whatever happens over there and whatever the political implications of it, this is not a conflict between Jews and Muslims. This is not something that we see as a hindrance to the relationships that we have. We're all trying to reach the goal of peace. We all want peace in the Middle East. We don't necessarily know how to get there. We might disagree about what those boundaries look like, but none of us want to see an escalation in violence. Andrew, uh, talk about the two-state, one-state solution. You're much more smarter than I am on all of this, as well as everybody else, because it is very, very confusing. And as you said, it's gone on for thousands of years. But the argument is that the only way peace could happen and to keep Israel the way it was was a two-state solution. And now they're saying because of this, the only way for peace now is a one-state solution. Thank you. Well, I just want to be clear. If you look at the content of the statement that Trump made, it was actually a very good statement. It was a statement that reaffirmed a two-state solution, and we need to recognize that. Again, that's the content is different than the political act. You're asking the question about what is this issue of a two-state solution? Why two states? Right. You have in the landmass between the Jordan River and the Mediterranean two separate in a, in political areas. One is uh, Israel. Uh, and the other is the area controlled by Israel, the West Bank. Uh, And that is, if you constitute that into one state, you have populations that most people believe will become uh, majority uh, Palestinian in just a matter of years. And if that's one state, then uh, if it's a democracy, uh, it's no longer going to be a Jewish majority democracy. And so one state means either giving up a Jewish state 
or it means giving up a democracy. Right. And the concern is that, again, the political act being different than what, you, what was achieved, the political act is not going to be seen for the nuance of the statement. It is instead going to be reacted to as giving up Jerusalem and creating a one state which gives so, up Palestinian hope for an independent state. Right. So, so explain to me how this helps a two-state solution to keep Israel a Jewish state as opposed to a one-state solution where they control Jerusalem and it's one vote, one person. Uh, great. So this actually, the concern is that this political act of declaring the recognition now actually sets that prospect back. That's the concern. Right. The two-state solution back. Correct. By, that, by, by recognizing Jerusalem as the capital. Because one of the final status issues for any peace agreement was what was the status of Jerusalem. And sadly, there wasn't the initial recognition that Jerusalem, which is the capital of Israel, was the capital, and that became a contested issue because the Palestinians want Jerusalem to be the capital of their state, which most people believe it will be. There'll be two capitals in one city. So you're, do you agree that this sets back a two-state solution? Uh, I'm not smart enough to, to know that. I can only report what other people say. Are you in favor of a two-state solution? I am in favor because, okay. I'm, because I'm in favor of a Jewish state of Israel. Right, and that's the argument. And a one-state solution, which would be uh, one state in that whole landmass, will create the demographics on the ground that it, the only way to be a Jewish state is to not be a democracy. That's not viable. Uh, a two-state solution, would you share, you can, can you share Jerusalem? But that's the argument, right? Sure. I mean, right now, the Jerusalem is formally divided into two areas, one that is formally part of Israel and that the other that has been de facto annexed uh, as of 1980 when, uh, when Israel extended the municipal boundaries into what is now East Jerusalem. I want to ask this next question as respectfully as possible. And I said it yesterday on the show, and the caller laughed because it was such a bizarre comment. And that is this. We have a president of the United States that is now beloved by Israel because of this. Right? Absolutely, sure. But we also have a president, the same president, that is beloved by the neo-Nazis. Yeah. That's a weird place to be in, would you agree? <laughs> uh, of course. Uh, and I think, you know, part of the context that's the concern is that you have a president that has, uh, whose policies and rhetoric are perceived to be by many anti-Muslim, uh, with a particular target on the Islamic faith. Uh, and that makes a statement like this without an explicit rec other explicit recognitions, it, it, although they were there in the statement, uh, problematic from a political point of view. But there, there are people out there who would think, wow, this, this man said there are good people on both sides, right? Sort of embracing the David Dukes of the world. David Duke is, is proud, retweeting all of the things he retweets. He retweeted that, that neo-fascist website um, and video from uh, Britain First a couple of days ago. And then to do this, it seems counterintuitive to the rest of us that he is beloved by the neo-Nazis and the fascists as well as the Jewish community. It's a weird, you would agree, it's a weird place to be in. Uh, it's a weird place to be. It's not something that any of us would expect. But I think what you're speaking to is a really smart observation. You know, Obama in 2009, the first act in the Middle East was a, a speech in Cairo that, that got a lot of people upset that he's aligning with the Arabs. And, and I understood that concern. That would have been the moment to internationally recognize because uh, Jerusalem, or at least move this forward. And I think there was a lot of disappointment. So, you know, this is not a partisan issue one way or the other. And I think what you're speaking to is that the image of the president, both locally and abroad, makes this kind of statement that he needs to be very careful about to reinforce what he said in the statement to be pro-Palestinian state, along with the things that he said. You know, look at the statement that he said, and I'm hoping that he will continue to pursue what he said in that statement in terms of pursuing a two-state solution. Uh, Rory, any comments about you, all this? I think this is what actually just plays out in terms of what we've been talking about, of how the Jewish community sees itself locally and how we try to align ourselves politically. Um, it's certainly put people into the difficult tr decision of um, what happens when there's something that you've been yearning for, for not just thousands of years in terms of this return to the Jewish homeland, but then for decades of the recognition of Jerusalem as the capital of that homeland, what we have always declared in our prayers and in our hearts, and then to have that declaration come in this context of, as Andrew said, Islamophobia, of hate speech, of white supremacy rising in this country. And so 
we really want to see what comes next. We're thrilled that Jerusalem is recognized as the capital. We've known that Jerusalem is the capital of Israel. That wasn't a question for us before the president said it and now right. after the president said it. But what we do want to know is what is the plan for achieving peace in this region and how do we ensure that this is part of a broader plan to do more outreach to these communities, to the Jewish community, to the Palestinian community, the broader Muslim world, the broader Arab world. And we, we need to see some of that, I think, for the reassurance, because until that time, everybody's just uncomfortable with that unknown. Yeah. Uh, we'll leave you with this, Andrew, and that was yesterday um, we were talking, and uh, President, the criticism, one of the criticisms was that his Secretary of State was against this action and was very much against this action. And I made the his, his historical point that George Marshall was very much against Harry Truman recognizing Israel. Yeah, fair enough. Fair um, enough. And, you know, all these years later, you have another yeah. Secretary of State being against a president who is recognizing Jerusalem. It's interesting symmetry all these it years later. It is, but it's false symmetry, and let me explain yeah. why. When Harry Truman issued his declaration recognizing Israel as a state, there were armies massed against it of multiple Arab countries to destroy and take out Israel and uh, re repudiate it. What Harry Truman did was courageous, it was noble, it was the right thing to do, and it saved lives by doing it. What, again, it was not sticking the, the, the stick on the beehive. It was having a plan and being very clear that it's better to do it that way. Well, again, the concern is there was no pressing reason to do it at this moment, which is why the State Department establishment, which is why former ambassadors to Israel were all almost unilaterally opposed to doing this at this time and moment. The result, as Rory said, Jerusalem is the capital of Israel. We don't need a president to recognize it. As an American citizen, right. I'm proud that America does, but that doesn't get at the political issue of what's the timing and the context the right one. It's not a symmetrical situation. Does this make it harder or, or easier for peace? Well, again, the consensus seems to be it's much more riskier, much harder. I do want to say, and here's where hope comes in, this is now a fact on the ground. Let's look to how this could be a lever for peace in the future. Let's look to reinforce the content of Trump's statement, which is very good, very strong, very much an endorsement of a two-state solution. And let's figure out a way, to Rory's point, that we can do this in partnership with our Muslim brothers and sisters here and also with Palestinians in the land of Israel. Andrew Rayfield, President and CEO of the Jewish Federation of St. Louis, you are always welcome here to educate Thank us. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks uh, for taking the time. Roy Picker, niece, you're always welcome here as well. Thanks for coming in. Thank you so much. You got it. Seven. 29 here, Big 550 KTRS.